Hello kings and queens. I want to speak to you today about my testimony having an out-of-body experience. And that out-of-body experience uh, led me to hell. And I'd like to begin to let you know I was dating this guy and I fornicated. And one night I was in the bed, about to go to sleep, and I had the TV on and all the lights out, and um, my 12-year-old daughter wanted to sleep with me that night. She was laying beside me, so, um, like I said, the TV was the only thing on if all the lights were out. And as, as I was laying there and listening to the TV play very low in volume, I heard something tapping. Tap, tap, three times, four times, and I turned the TV volume all the way down, and the tapping stopped. And then once again, I began to lay down and drift off. I was just laying there, listening to the TV. It started tapping again, tap, 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 and I turned the volume all the way down, and and uh, the tapping stopped. So I knew something was there. I knew something was there, and uh, I was like, Lord, I don't know what, but I'm, you know, you know, just uh, hope it go away. So the third time I just laid them up, turned on my back and closed my eyes and opened my eyes. I felt like something was watching me. I felt like if I went to sleep, that something bad was gonna happen, but I didn't know what, I didn't know what. So on the laying on my back, I just began to drift off. And soon as I drift off, something grabbed me. I mean, it was waiting for me to just go into a sleep. As soon as I drift off, I, I felt it because I was like trying to stay woke and not at the same time. As soon as I stripped off, it grabbed me. And I couldn't move, I couldn't open my eyes, I couldn't move my neck, my legs and arms. And I saw myself going down fast in dark, deep darkness. Deep darkness, it's like I was going down in the ground and all I could see was passing in the ground. I could see the rocks, it's like being on an elevator, passing downward, seeing the rocks by past me. But I was going very, very fast into deep darkness. And, uh, I remember trying to inhale. I was trying to inhale, take a breath. And when I tried to inhale, it was like something was just taking the life out of me. It was like sucking the air out of me. So I knew therefore I was dying. But I also can see myself laying there next to my daughter uh, in, in, in our bedroom. But as I was going down, like I said, deep in darkness and fast, I tried to inhale again. It just, the suction of the life was coming out of me. I can feel myself dying. So I was dead. At that moment, I was still going fast. I was still going fast. I, I couldn't. I tried to talk. I couldn't do nothing. So uh, the Spirit of the Lord said, something just said, call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. And I, I don't know if I said Yeshua and Jesus. I said one of the names. And just like that, I was released. And I was released, released back into my body. And I opened my eyes. And I uh, looked to the left, my daughter was still laying there asleep. And I looked around, everything in my room was the same. And um, as before I began to pray, I, I told the Lord, I repented and I said, forgive me, I know what it was regarding. It was regarding I had sinned, I had fornicated with this guy I had dated. So I got on my knees and I prayed. And I got to thinking, I was like, fornication, you know, Sex is for a married couple, which is an institution institution between the man and woman and the Most High God. And I said, it's a mystery. So I got to, I got to, you know, uh, reading up on it and studying it. I said, this is something. So I'm here to tell you guys, you know, sex is for married couples, and there's a mystery when it become comes to sex. You know, sex outside of marriage bring demonic spirits. It brings sin to your life. Things will happen. Um, the act of sex is worshiping. I found out sex is worshiping. Worshiping. If you uh, married, you're worshiping. You're worshiping God. Excuse me, my tongue get tied sometimes. When you when you're married, you're you're worshiping God when you have sex, and God approves that. When you're having sex outside of marriage, you know, you're worshiping Satan. 
And when you do that, that allows demonic spirits to come around you, spirits to come into your life and into your home to destroy you. That's what happened to me that night. I didn't realize the spirits was there until I had laid down there and I uh, always can feel uh, bad around me or something, or any bad energy around me, I can feel it. So when you have sex outside marriage, it brings demonic spirits and you're worshiping, worshiping the devil. You, you, you know, that's the mystery of sex. And this is what the pastors in the churches are not teaching. Um, that's why I left the churches because they're not teaching the true truth or the true truth of God's word. And uh, this is something they should be teaching. Sex is a mystery. Um, the, act of, act, the act of sex heals that you are worshiping something. You're going to be either worshiping the Most High God when you're married and having sex, and outside of marriage and you have sex, you're worshiping the devil, Satan, and his angel, and Satan's angels. And I have a verse um, you know, and from Romans and five nine, uh, on obedience, you know, I, I, you know, I disobeyed God. So on Romans five nineteen, it's, it's talking about, it's reading about obedience. I would like to read that, uh, that scripture. It is Romans five and nineteen, and it reads, and I'm reading from the King James version. Again, Romans. 5 and 19 and it reads for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous I read it again Romans 5 and 19 it reads for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall be made righteous. And I want to be made righteous. See, I, I, I knew I was doing wrong when I fornicated. I thought I could get away. I just got caught up. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Uh, my daughter, you know, I, uh, I'm going to show you. And I always uh, live for the Lord and I read my Bible and um, pray to the Most High God. But this time, uh, the Lord said, I'm going to show you. You, 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 you know, you disobeyed me. You know, never disobey God. You know, and he showed me. Uh, like I said, I was going into deep, deep darkness. Deep darkness. I couldn't yell. I couldn't talk. Uh, couldn't do anything. I couldn't turn my neck. I couldn't open my eyes. I saw myself dying, and then I was going into a deep. First, I go into falling. It was I was falling fast into a deep, deep tunnel, darkness, grab ground. Uh, the devil and his angels had me. I couldn't move. I couldn't move until I called on the name of the Lord. You know, Jesus. That's when I was let go of and back into my body. I knew I was living wrong. I did wrong. I can't, you can't live that way and try to um, live for God too. You can't be straddled the fence. You can't be hot or cold. I mean, you can't be lukewarm. You got to be hot or cold. You know, the most high God wants you to be one way. Let your nay be nay or yay be yay. I knew I was living wrong. So after that, I had the, the most high God said, I'm your man. I need you to live for me. I need you to speak life into people. I need you to speak his word, speak my word, and help people with the word. I was I knew I was doing wrong. He said, I'm your man. You don't need a man. Raise your two children. You have a 20-year-old and I have a 12-year-old daughters. He said, you need to raise them, continue to raise them. I'm your man. I need you to put my word out there. But he proved to me and showed me that he let the devil take over me my life just for a moment to prove to me I could have taken your life I was going to hell people there is a hell and there is a heaven but most part I like to teach people let people know there is a hell there is a hell please I don't wish this on anybody I don't wish this on anybody you know live for God do right do not fornicate 
don't sin, period. But my fall to almost to hell was coming from me fornicating. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to fornicate. He wants all God's people, you know, in general to die. You know, we have to live for God. We have to live for God. Uh, like I say, sex, uh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. And I have written down some things, uh, you know, about the mystery of sex. You know, it says... Um, you know, we shouldn't use our body, you know, in in that kind of way, in fornication, because when you have sex, it's, it's a worship. You're giving your body to someone. With God, like I said, with God, it is a, you know, when you get married, it's a union, a contract with God. It's a covenant between you, that man, and that, you know, that woman, and, and the most high God, it's a contract. You know, it starts out physical, then it becomes spiritual with sex. And it depends on if you're married or not, who you're worshiping and what uh, angels are coming to you. If you're married, having sex, the angels of God is there. If you're having sex outside of marriage, the devils and his angels are coming. You know, and that's a scary thing. I was dying. I was dead. And I couldn't believe that happened to me, but... God said, I was trying to prove to you and show you, you were living wrong. You know, leave these guys alone. I'm your man. You know, the most high God will prove things to you. Um, I have some more things I wrote down here. It says, um, when it comes to having sex outside of marriage, um, like I said, the act of sex is worshiping. I had to learn that and study that because I felt like it's something more deeper that happened because I fornicate, I need to, I need to uh, figure this thing out. I need to do some research. Um, when you're outside of marriage, having sex, it bring it brings on the demonic attacks. The demonic attacks is the payment of the sin. The sin is a, gives the devil the legal legal right to attack you. A curse cannot come up on your life without a cause or a curse from your ancestors. Sin is a transgression of the law. You know, that is what Satan needs for us to do. You know, so he can come into our life to take our life. Does he want the blood of the Most High God's people? It brings the money experience people. Don't have sex outside of marriage. And it was something there in my house because like before, I, when I began to tell you my story, remember I told you it was tapping in my room. Tap, 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 and I turned the TV down, the tapping stopped. I laid back down. Had my, this, I had my eyes open. I wouldn't sleep. The tapping started again. Tap, tap, tap. I raised up, turned the TV back down, and there it was. You know, I knew something was there, and I, I already knew before I lay down, like something is not right. It's going to happen. You know, when I close my eyes, go to sleep, you know, I just feel like something's going to happen. And what happened was, I went to hell. I was on my way to hell. And I thank the Most High God for giving me another day to get it right. You know, people, please don't sin. Don't sin. Don't fornicate. It brings demonic spirits around your home. It brings them. They're there. Uh, it opens up, uh, to, it open up uh, uh, the other realm. And they enter, and I was in that other room, about to uh, head it to, head it to hell. And it opened up portals to your house. That demonic spirit was in my home, so that portal, by my by me sinning and fornication, it had opened up portals in my home, and allowed a demon in there. I don't know how many demons was there, but I knew it was a demon there. So please, fornication will bring demonic attacks and sin on your life. And so just stay with the Most High God. And Mr. Deborah, I thank you for letting me share my um, testimony. And I, um, I hope this saved someone's life. And I hope this opened someone's eyes. Because the devil is real. The Most High God is real. Uh, the hell is real. So uh, once again, I hope this opened up people's eyes. Someone's eyes. 
And Mr. Bora, thank you once again for allowing me to share this testimony uh, with you. And uh, I thank God for you and your husband. I do watch your videos and I pray for you guys. And uh, I thank God for putting you guys in my life and, and to put out the word for everyone, not just for me. And, uh, you, you know, I pray for you guys and you guys are doing a great work. And again, thank you for allowing me to share my testimony to you and the people in the world. And again, uh, as I always say, stay blessed. And uh, I will see you soon with more videos. Thank you. Have a good day.